Hey everybody, I'm Sean and welcome to my channel. Today, I am just gonna show you that you, my friend, those of you with the single needle five by seven embroidery hoops, you can embroider these cute little heirloom blankets, you know, the quilted ones with that pretty scalloped edge. I think that's called a scallop where the edge goes like that. But you can create one of these blankets or embroider on one of these blankets using your five by seven an embroidery machine hoop and they come out so cute so come on let's get started alrighty so for this project I'm going to be using one of these quilted heirloom baby blankets it's the blankets with the real pretty quilting in it and it's got the edges that are kind of scallop like that and I think they are 36 by 46 but I will leave a link in the description box to the website where I obtained them from and they did come from the craft loft LLC so this is the design that I'm going to be putting on this blanket it is just a B with a really pretty frame that I obtained both the font and the frame from designs by Juju the frame came in a set of different frames you know she's got a bunch of different sets where you'll get like four or five different, I can't remember how many, but you know, a number of different designs which within one group. And then this was a separate font that I honestly cannot remember what the name of the font is, but I'll go find it and I'll put it in the uh, video somewhere here. So now, the stitch out was not all that pretty on my test stitch. The tension was off a little bit here and there. And I know that it was because I had a thread holder stand that was not the one that I should have been using because I had one that I should have been through away because it wasn't holding the thread correctly and my thread kept getting caught up under it. So I switched it out. I know it'll be good. Now I am going to be using the five by seven frame or hoop for the brother VE2200. And that is what I stitched the test stitch in as well. So for all of you who have single needle flatbed uh, embroidery machine uh, that you use at home, don't think that you cannot stitch out a blanket and have it come out pretty because you have a single needle. It can be done as long as you have at least a five by seven hoop because that's how this is. And this isn't even the full five by seven. Um, let me pull out my ruler because this design going across is barely, it's not even six inches across at its widest points. Okay. So you can get a nice size design on one of these blankets with a five by seven hoop. Okay. Now four by four, that might be pressing it a little bit, but I'm not going to say that it wouldn't come out right or nice, but you don't have to have a huge frame or huge hoops to get a really cute design stitched out onto one of these okay so you all know I like to float things but I'm going to try to actually hoop this the way it's supposed to be hooped I am going to be using tearaway stabilizer and my Amazon favorites list is in the description box I am also going to be using water soluble stabilizer. I will drape that on top of the blanket after it's um, hoop so that we can get it so that we can ensure that the stitches look nice and pretty. This isn't one of those materials that the threads are going to sink down into it. It's not like terry cloth or towel, but I want to make sure that my stitches look as clean and as crisp as possible so I am going to put a little bit of water soluble stabilizer on top so now I know that this is crooked because I've got the camera on the side of the table but um you'll still be able to see what I'm doing I'm going to make sure that this is loosened up so that I'm not busting my hoops open and then I am going to this is going to be easy because I'm going to find the point. This is where I want my center line to be is going to be in this point. So I'm not ironing or marking anything. And I know we have these little nodules that you can feel inside the hoops of the uh, single needle machine hoops. So that's the center line, right? 
Now I am going to just, first of all, make sure this is the corner that I want it stitched in and it is, okay. So I'm going to make sure I have this center where the corner meets or the bottom meets at and I'm going to find the center on the hoop and just match it up right there. And now I'm just going to try to slide it straight up. Still feeling for that little nodule because I want to make sure that it stitches within this part and not down on these borders. And so let's see. That technically is centered, but it doesn't feel and look centered to me. I'm just going to adjust it until it's where I feel like it needs to be just looking at it anyways. Because the last thing that you want to do is give somebody an item and have it be stitched completely crooked or at least looking unbalanced. I think that's what I'm really looking for. I want it to look balanced within the blanket. Okay. Now here is the hard part. Okay, I'm going to see if I can loosen this up a little bit more. I'm just um, unscrewing it a little to give me a little bit more wiggle room in here. Okay. And ideally, I should have put the water soluble in there. I'm loosening it up more. I should have put the water soluble in there, but I'm already doing this and I can always drape the water soluble on top, so it'll be okay. Okay, so that, that's really tight to hoop. Now, I have a lot of videos where I float things. And honestly, with the exception of this video, for this machine, I will float any blanket that I stitch on it. But I do understand that I have a, a few people who prefer that, you know, it be actually hooped the way you're supposed to hoop it. And I don't want to confuse people with how I'm doing this. So if that makes any sense to you, sometimes I ramble. God bless y'all for dealing with me. Now I am going to get my water soluble and place it on top. And now I will say looking down at this corner here, this corner is not lined up with my center mark, but looking at the design, how it goes down, they are balanced. So, I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to put that there. And where is my tape? I've got some tape somewhere. And this is just some painter's tape that I'm going to use so that the water soluble does not come off. Okay, so that's on there. I am going to pray that this stays hooped and it doesn't pop and we will see you at the machine. Alrighty, so we have the blanket at the VE2200, which is the single needle machine by Brother. Now, I always like to tell people during my videos now that this machine version is currently discontinued. Well, currently 
it's discontinued. Uh, there are updated versions of this machine available by Brother. So just check out their website and see, you know, what ha- what's available. Get with your local dealers if this type of machine is something that you are interested in. All righty. So I've got the machine threaded. It's going to st- start off with a gray thread, but it would help if I had the design pulled up. Now I transfer my designs to the machine using a flash drive. The flash drive goes over here on the side of the machine. And then to pull the design up, I'm going to select that USB symbol. And then I'm going to look for my design. Now I will tell you that this flash drive has both PES and DSTs on it because I use DST for the other machines. And then of course, for this machine, it will read DSTs, which this is how the DSTs look. You don't see the pretty pictures. I'm trying to zoom in and give you a better look, but you don't see the pictures with the DSTs when you're looking at it on this machine, but um, it will pull them up and it will stitch it. So that would be my design, but I'm gonna go back because I know I have a PES version saved. It's a little slow sometimes transmitting because I have so many on there. There are 20 pages. Oh my goodness, that's too many. For this machine, um, less is definitely more because the more that you have on your flash drive, the harder it's going to be for your machine to read through all of that stuff. So I am looking for the, oh, it's right here. It was on the first page, goodness. That's the PSE version. Now I'm gonna select embroidery. It's in embroidery mode, but I need to rotate that because that is not how I want that to be stitched. So I'm gonna rotate it. Now that is how I want it to be stitched. This is the first color, which is irrelevant because with the single needle, you're definitely controlling every single color because the machine will stop after every color. So I'm going to start this off with gray. I'm going to just close that out so you can see all the other stuff on there. I'm not going to worry about tracing it today because I did do a test stitch and it does fit inside the hoop. So... We're gonna come over here or look over here. We're gonna lower the presser foot, uh, lower the presser foot and then hit start. Now this design says that it is a 29 minute stitch out. You all know if you've watched my channel that I'm not gonna record the whole 29 minutes because I am trying to make my videos a little shorter and a little more viewable for most people because I know after about 30 minutes, I'm not invested in a video anymore. For most videos anyways. So you can see it is stitching. And are still stitching. So far, so good. Alrighty, so the gray is done stitching. And now it is time to rethread, changing the colors to pink. And now while this gray is the gray from Synthread, this pink is from Nubro Thread but they are both 40 weight embroidery threads and they are both polyester.
this one has the auto threader here. And now I'm just going to do a, I'm going to lower the presser foot and then I'm going to do a thread trim to get rid of that extra thread. And now we'll go ahead, lower the presser foot and stitch out the threads that are going to be pink or the design part that's going to be pink. Okay, so I just had a thread break. I looked away and I realized the tension is messed up on the pink. Um, and when I looked, remember when I told you about the thread stand messing up? Um, this is what I'm talking about. The thread actually went under here. I'm sorry, the thread went under its spool. So it was on the thread stand up underneath the spool. So that is something I'm gonna have to figure out with these spools of thread, how I can get that to not happen. So in the meantime, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off the hook, off of the uh, machine. I am gonna find the broken needle pieces, replace the needle, and I'm gonna back up the stitch. Let's see here. Yeah, there's the broken needle there. Clip that. So I'm gonna make sure all the needle pieces are out. I'm gonna go through the back side with a seam ripper and clear those because that's no good there. I'll back up the steps and then start restitching. Alrighty, so I have it re-threaded. I am taking this spool of thread off of the thread stand. And I'll tell you, I truly think that it's doing this because of the way the bottom of this spool is made. Because I don't have a problem with, this is the Coats brand, and do you see the difference in how the bases are made? So that's probably why the thread keeps getting caught up under here. And I have the same problem with this particular brand on my multi needles as well. So, and I don't have that problem on the, the coats and the Madeira. So uh, we're gonna get through it, okay? <laughs> I am going to back this up a little bit. So what I did to back this up, I'm gonna hit this plus and minus button and I'm gonna go back about 50. Maybe I should have went back 100 and then come forward. And what I'm doing, I'm over here looking to see where the needle was gonna go down at. Cause I wanted to kind of overlap a little bit from where it messed up. And then I had to go through with a seam ripper from the back side to take that extra thread out. So it's just coming over where the um, thread would already be in place. Sorry, I had a pause in my thought, but now I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. And we'll see if that works. Hopefully it does. Let's see. Yeah, I think I crossed that over at a good point there. So I'm gonna put the phone back up on the tripod so that I'm not holding it and shaking it and we'll continue stitching. Uh-oh, lower the presser foot and then hit start. And just in case you're wondering, I am using a 7511 sharp needle. The brand is Oregon or Oregon, however you pronounce it. 
I do still have the thread going up through the top of the thread holder because otherwise if it wasn't going up there it wouldn't work correctly going into the machine So now I'm going to hit pause for just a moment because what I want to do is go in and I want to get this extra string, the extra threads out of the way and just clip that and then we'll resume. So I'll let that continue stitching. I am going to sit and watch it, but I won't make you all. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are almost finished. We just have to finish stitching out that B. And it will be done. Alrighty, so we are all done here. Now I am going to lift up that little lever there because that's how this particular machine locks the hoop in place. I am going to slide the blanket and hoop out. Uh, let's see here, let's tear this stabilizer away, and here we go. Not the best right here. Um, I did run out of thread, I had to back it up, and then I was like, okay, I thought I had it overlapped good, and it wasn't overlapped as good as I thought it should have been, as I think it should have been. But overall, it doesn't look bad. I'm gonna cut these jump stitches. I'm not sure why the jump stitches didn't cut, but they are visible on the computer as well. So I'm just assuming that the way it was digitized, they didn't cut the jump stitches out or whatnot. And my machine normally does cut jump, jump stitches. So I'm not sure what that deal was. But overall, I like it. And let's go to the table and get it cleaned up. Okay, so I did start tearing the stabilizer off of it. And this is just the tear away stabilizer on the back here. And I'm gonna go through and tear off as much as I possibly can. And then because this is a baby blanket, if there are any stitches that might like, fingers might get caught between, I clip those because you don't want anyone's little one to get their fingers caught up in any threads that might be crossing over there. I'm just kind of scanning just to see if I see any more. There we go, right there. And that is just me. I guess that's just the mommy and me. I want to make sure that those Are not going to cause a problem. Now, if it was on one of mine, I just leave them. <laughs> but let me clear the stabilizer off. And then I also am going to go through and clip these jump stitches completely away so that they're not visible. Did you see those? These jump stitches here so that they're not visible. And then I'm going to clean this stabilizer off and I'll show you the end result. Alrighty guys, so it is all done and this is the end result. I like the way it looks truly, I do. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this, but I like it. And so it was done in the 5x7 hoop. 
not hard to do. You can always float it so that hooping isn't so stressful, but you know, a lot of people don't like floating. So I wanted to show how to stitch it, actually hooping it the way you're supposed to. And these little quilts do hoop well with this machine. I mean, with um, this hoop. Okay. So I don't have anything else for this video. I am going to do a couple more videos um, with the blankets because I want to show them being stitched on each machine that I have because they're all slightly different. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will try to post as much information as possible in the description box. And until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and keep taking care of yourselves.